for the first time, it is really dawning on the majority of the traditional investment management and traditional banking systems um, that these rails create all new opportunities for us, right? And that people are now beginning to make those plans and embrace the technology. Um, and this was something, you know, that we should have seen coming. We kind of see this trend happen over and over with very new technologies taking a little bit of time for their potential to be understood by the financial industry. We saw the same thing with cloud technologies. I remember having many, many conversations, some of them even with you, Doug, uh, with firms about you know, why it was going to be beneficial for financial services to take advantage of cloud-based service-based offerings. Um, that is so commonplace now, it's hard to remember that those conversations even took place, uh, but they did. And we're at that point in the cycle again now uh, where I think Sergey completely identified the tipping point, which is we issue assets, right? We issue assets, we trade assets, we put assets into portfolios, we wrap portfolios in different wrappers to make them accessible uh, to investors. And when you think about the way in which we do that, the market infrastructure on which we have been doing that is 50 years old. Right? We came out with all of the processes that kind of define today's financial market infrastructure back in the early 1970s. And though we've added better computing power uh, and more service-based ways of accessing those services, it is still the same set of services that we've been performing for 50 years. Uh, and what we are starting to see with the blockchain technologies is there are ways to improve that tremendously. Right, There are ways to cut the processing times to get more real-time information. There are ways to enable 24 by 7 by 365 trading because we live in a global world. Our businesses operate in global worlds and we should be able to trade portfolios in global worlds around the clock. Uh, we are looking at new ways of kind of now exchanging assets uh, in a manner that brings together cash and securities that has never really existed in the same formulation of being able to really think of these as completely transferable securities in the moment. And we are starting to put assets into common holding structures called wallets. And if you think about the complexity of account structures today, um, that's a huge improvement just in and of itself. So I think that the biggest trend for 2024 is just as Franklin Templeton did on our journey, I think a lot of firms, as they start to partake in these um, explorations, which start off with perhaps a very modest goal, right? We started off with a very modest goal. Um, but what happens is, is I think the more you engage in this space, the greater the opportunity set becomes because you're better, your understanding becomes. And that's where I think you're going to see a lot of progress made in 2024. Um, I've seen even in just the last six months, the level of understanding and excitement and expansive thinking from my peers that I speak with has moved tremendously. So I think we're going to see a lot of excitement, a lot of building, and a lot of new opportunities emerge in the coming year.